Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 14 of my Android development tutorial. Today, we are going to completely finish the Android address book app. And on top of that, I'm going to show you how to import Android packages, which I probably should have did in the past, never thought of it, but you guys asked for it, so I'm going to show you that as well. Also going to show you how to clean up our layout a little bit by digging into some of the functions available to us in XML with Android. And if you haven't seen any of the previous tutorials, I've provided a link to those in the upper right-hand corner, and the code is available in the description for this video. And another thing I wanted to address, because it comes up all the time, is you guys asking for or homework. One thing you could definitely do, especially in projects like this where I create an address book or create any app step by step, video by video, is very often all of the techniques you need to create the next part of the app, like we're going to do here in Android Part 14, are taught in the previous tutorial. So if you wanted to practice, you could definitely figure out how to solve the problem of how to edit contacts like we're going to cover in this part of the tutorial by referring to techniques in part 13. So there's just some ideas and some things that have come up. I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so here we are. What we're going to do in this tutorial is show you how to make this guy right here fully functional, which is going to allow you to edit your contacts. And one problem we have here is, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but this button right here is smaller than this button. And that just looks god-awful terrible. So what I'm going to show you is how easy it is to fix that. So we're going to go down here into the actual XML file, and we're going to come down until we get to the point where we find our buttons, which are way at the bottom. Then what we're going to do is in the width area right here, we are going to change this to 0 DIP. And what DIP stands for is Density Independent Pixels. And basically we use DIP so that we are able to allow automatic scaling regardless of screen resolution or pixel density of the device. And the reason why we're going to change this to 0 DIP is because this is going to force weight to determine the width of our button in this situation. So we're going to come down here again to this width area, change this to DIP, and once again the weight that we have here, what that's going to define for us, is how much of the total width available our little component is going to take up. So if we say this one gets a weight of 1, and this one gets a layout weight of 1, that means that they should receive equal amounts of space. So let's save that, go into the graphical layout, and now you can see that our buttons are perfectly aligned. So there's a little trick. Now what we're going to do is go into editcontact.java and finish this application. So here we are in editcontact.java, and I went and put the package in there ahead of time. And what we're going to do is go public class, and this is going to be called edit contact, and it's going to extend activity because it is an activity. And then along the way, I'm just going to come in here and get all the libraries that I'm going to be needing, import library. And hopefully if you've watched this far in the tutorial, you're really starting to understand how things work. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all my edit text components here so that I will be able to go in and pull information from them and add information to them. And I'm going to need four more of these guys. And of course, we're going to have last name, phone number, email address, and home address. And now that we have those set up, we're going to have to go get all our database tools that are available to us because we created those previously. So we're going to go DB tools. I'm just going to call it DB Tools. Is it with a new DB Tools? And pass in this. And then we have to come in here and define on create, which is going to set up everything whenever the activity is displayed. So public void on create saved instance state. And this guy is just going to hold all of those different key valued pairs that we want to save in situations in which our data may be deleted. And there's a bundle. And of course we have to get that library as well. And then we're going to call the super to get the saved data if there is any. And then we're going to set our content view. And it is going to be equal to layout.edit contact. And that is just a reference to this XML file that we have up here. See? Edit contact.xml. That's what we're referring to. And then we need to actually get our edit text objects from here. So I'm just going to copy this. Nah, I'm just going to do it this way. And to get these, we're going to go edit text, cast that, and then we're going to find 
view by ID and then we're going to go R dot ID first name and that guy right there is coming from this click on this editable text area and if we come over here you can see first name there it is another thing keeps coming up if people are getting R errors inside of Eclipse just wanted to cover this all you got to do is go into project like this and then come down here and click on clean and that should make that problem go away another there is another reason why you get those though sometimes in layout if you have anything in these files inside of here that have uppercase letters for the file names that can sometimes cause that error as well so those are just some things to think about as well as inside of values say these are all lowercase as well so those are two reasons why you might be getting those R errors that I've been seeing a lot of that's why it's good to ask me questions because I try to address them in the tutorials Okay, and then we'll go last name and last name, phone number, phone number, email address, email address, and then finally home address. Just referring to the names that are in the XML file. Now that I have that set up, what I'm going to do is create an intent. And like I said before, an intent defines that an operation is going to be performed. I'm going to call this intent, uh, intent get intent and get intent is just going to return the activity that started this activity come in here get those libraries again and then we're going to create a string and it's going to be named contact ID and what we're going to do is we're going to get the extended data that was provided to this activity whenever it was called and if you don't remember that let's go back over into main activity open that up and we're specifically looking for put extra see right here there it is and that's the reason why we were getting the previous intent that called this because contact ID was stored inside of here and if we come back over into here you can see that's exactly what we're going to be getting so to get that information we're gonna go the intent get string extra and that's going to get us the contact ID that was added onto that whenever this activity was called. So that's another way of passing information between activities. And now that we have that, we're going to create a hash map, string, string, and this is going to be called contact list. And to get our contact list, we're going to go DB tools, get contact info. And to get it, we need to pass the contact ID inside of it. So let's come over here, get contact info. And if we scroll down, we can see right here, string being the contact ID is passed in here. And then we are going to run an SQL query using that ID to get all of that raw data from our database. So pretty cool. So now we're back inside of here. First thing we want to do is make sure there is something in our contact list that was returned to us inside of our hash map. So we're going to go contact list and check the size and make sure it's not equal to zero. And if it wasn't equal to zero, we want to put the values that it returned into our edit text boxes. So we're going to go first name, set text, contact, list, dot, get, and their key value pair. So I have to enter the specific key. Now I just gave everything the same name because I thought that would be easy. So I just say the key is first name. Hey, go get me whatever the value is. And of course this needs to be uppercase. And then we're going to need a whole bunch of these because we're also going to get the last name, last name, phone, number, phone number, email address, email address, and home address, and home address. So there we go. Now we took all that information and it was passed over in a hash map and we are putting it into this guy over here. So these will all be filled with the proper information. And that's all we're going to need to do there. We're going to have to come in here and actually edit these contacts. So edit contact. And where this comes from, again, let's go into edit contact.xml, come into the actual XML data. And you can see right here where it says on click edit contact. Well, this is going to be the method that is going to be called whenever this button is clicked. And the view is going to be passed inside of there. And we're going to create another hash map. So I might as well just come up here and get this guy right here. So I don't have to type it out again. And then this guy is going to be called query values map new. And then create that guy. Then we're going to have to get our edit text objects again. So I'm just going to come up here and get those guys right like this. And then paste those in there. Going to go and get that extra data that was provided in regards to our contact ID. Just like we did before. So I'm going to grab this guy. Paste that in there. And you know why we're getting that. And then what we're going to do is put the values in the editable text boxes. 
into our hash map. And to do that, we're going to go put contact ID and then the value that's going to go inside of there. Well, in this situation, we know what contact ID is, so we're going to throw that in there like that. So we don't need to access that editable text object here, however first name and to get the value in the editable text area we're going to go as first name dot get text and then we're going to convert it into a string and that's going to get that for us so now all we have to do is do that for all the editable text boxes so we're going to have to do it for last name as well there we go phone number email address and I normally don't give everything exactly the same name but in this situation it just seemed to work so just remember it's all up to you how you do this stuff. I don't necessarily think there's always an ironclad definite way of doing things. If something makes more sense to you or if you're working in a team and it makes more sense to your team, I say do whatever. Okay, so database tools. Just make sure that you comment heavily on what exactly you're doing in case somebody else comes along and doesn't know what's going on. Alright, so update the contact, pass in query values map, if we jump into dbtools.java again, you can see update contacts going to receive a hash map and it's going to go through here and set everything inside of our database, which is pretty cool. All right, so we're back inside of here again. Now after we've updated our contact information, we want to call for the main activity to execute again. So we're just going to go this call main activity and pass in our view. And I'm going to create this guy call main activity. It's pretty much the same as you saw before, but I'm going to type it out because there's been some questions about things like intents and contexts and things like that. Okay, so this guy's job, all it is, is to open up the main activity. That's it. Nothing else. So, to do so, we have to create an intent because anytime we want to do something or have the intention of doing something, we have to use an intent. And then we're going to pass into it get application. Now what get application is going to do is it's going to return an application object which allows you to manage or allows your program to manage your application and respond to different actions. And it returns specifically the data type is an application object which extends a context object. Now a context is important because it provides all kinds of information on the environment your application is currently running in. And it provides different services like how to obtain access to a database, which is something that we're doing right here, and other different preferences that would be usable. And to really get into it, Google says specifically that a context, which is what this guy is going to ultimately return, I know it's called an application, but it's ultimately a context as well. Google says a context is an entity that represents various environment data. It provides access to local files, databases, class loaders associated the environment, services including system level services, and more. So that is all the information on context and specifically what is going on here. Well then we have to define the activity that we want to actually execute. And whenever you want to do that, if you want to execute main activity like we did right here, you have to follow that up with class. And that means that is what's going to activate. As long as you then follow that up with start activity and then type in object intent in this situation. So that is all it's doing. It's saying, hey, go start main activity. And main activity is this guy right here, main activity.java. And that is what's going on. Okay, so now that we have that all settled, the last thing we're going to need to do is to figure out how to remove contacts from our address book database. And I'm going to call this remove contact, and it's also going to get a view, view passed in. And of course, that all comes from editcontacts.xml, and specifically on click remove contact. Okay, so that's clicked. This is going to execute. And then guess what we're going to do? We're going to have to create ourselves another intent. And we're going to have to get the contact ID, just like that, just like before, except this is pretty simple. Paste that in there. And the whole goal here is to get contact ID, which is passed along to this. And then we're going to go dbtools.delete contact and pass in our contact ID, and it will delete it from our database. And then what we're going to do is call main activity. Paste that in there. File save. Everything's done. Let's execute. And here's Android all ready to go. And there you can see I already went in here and put a couple different contacts inside of here. But let's specifically test our guy that's going to allow us to edit contacts. And let's just call this guy Face instead of Ace. Face Adams and edit. And you can see change to Face. And let's also come in here and delete Derek. Delete. 
and there you can see Derek's gone and just for the heck of it because I never did this add and you can put anything in here you'd like so let's just say Pam Smith and I'm gonna provide the complete package for this whole entire thing so you'll be able to play around with it and in a second here I'm gonna show you exactly how to load the package and I'll just say it's p at AOL dot com and I'm just gonna type in main and save and there you can see Pam Smith shows up inside of there so there is everything that goes into making an address book and also I think you can pretty much do just about anything else with SQL inside of Android now the final thing I want to do for you is show you how to import libraries because I get this question all the time really simple well first let's go get a library so I'm just gonna go into my actual website and I'm gonna go download the Android stock quote picker which we created earlier and it's gonna download and then I'm gonna go into my downloads and there's stock quotes zip and there that guy is and here's stock quotes this folder over here and this is in my downloads folder now if I want to import that information inside of here I'm just gonna close all these windows all I need to do is go into file and then I'm gonna come down to import click on import and then this guy opens up here well then I'm gonna go into general right here see general and I'm gonna click on existing projects into workspace right like that come down hit next and then it's gonna say select root directory like it says right there and I'm gonna click on browse and I'm gonna find my downloads folder so mine's Derek Bannis da 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 and there's downloads and there is stock quotes that's the thing I just downloaded the package I'm gonna hit open and then I'm gonna come down here make sure this is checked right there and I hit finish and there you go stock quotes it's right there it's already used it's an Android project and everybody is happy with that okay so there's a whole bunch of different things we finished up the address book I'm actually not positive what the next Android app will be but I'll do my best to make it very nice it is probably gonna have something to do with fragments because you guys have asked for fragment tutorials a bunch of times so please leave your questions and comments below otherwise till next time